Normally diodes just allow current to go in one direction, but these ones are special because you're supposed to use them backwards and then they regulate voltage. This is a three volt Zener diode. And the idea is that if I have voltage higher than three volts, I can put this backwards and then we'll end up having the voltage that we want. Usually the strip is a negative side to my knowledge. So the idea is that if we put voltage here, like 12 volts, then on this side, we should only have three volts. So we'll essentially step the voltage down. Right now I am on three volts, but this is also three volts. So I need to up my voltage real quick. So I'm gonna turn it up to six volts. So twice as much, hopefully still safe and hopefully easier math. If we need to do any calculations, we know that this is twice as much. So we know that we wanna send uh, six volts this way, which means we need to get rid of three volts. So I'm gonna get like maybe a 1K resistor which will go into the Zener diode. And then this will just go to ground. So I'll just ground it here. So the idea is this guy is going to have a voltage drop of three volts. So I'm gonna turn it on and make sure it works. And then we go from there. We do have 2.94 volts as expected. And the resistor at 3.26. Now the question is just because the voltage across the Zener is three volts, does that mean that this point over here has three volts available? And I don't really know how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna test that. Actually, you know what? Probably the best way to test this is by using a capacitor because a capacitor charges to its supply voltage. So let's put this capacitor in and then let's check the voltage across the capacitor. He's climbing quite high. He's going way above the three volts. So I don't know if I am doing this correctly. But I was expecting the capacitor to only reach three volts because the idea is that at this point, at this position, the voltage should have been regulated down to three volts here. So there's something I'm not understanding. I'm gonna add another resistor and really I should discharge this capacitor. And the way that we do that is if we put in a resistor and then we just plug in the capacitor. So it should be about zero volts now. And I'm gonna put him back in series with the diode, but I'm also going to put in a 1000 ohm resistor in parallel. So what I'm thinking is these two should share voltages. So maybe now this will show the three volts and this should show three volts if there really is three volts available at this point. The resistor is 1.74 volts and the capacitor should be also 1.74. I guess it's still charging. Over here, we have 1.75 milliamps, right? Because 1.75 volts divided by a thousand ohms equals 1.75 milliamps. And on this side, we have also 1.75 milliamps. So it seems to me in a normal series circuit with resistors, the resistors, of course, everybody in a series has the same current. So if we have two 1000 ohm resistors and they would have the same voltage dropping across them, which means they have the same current. That seems to be what's happening here. But I sort of thought that there'd be a separate circuit uh, from this side versus this side. I thought this is sort of like one voltage source and then the other side should be its own separate voltage source so that Resistors shouldn't share like that, but in this case, they, they definitely are. So I'm not really sure. I'm going to discharge my capacitor. And I'm going to turn on my voltage even more and see if we continue to get an even split between the two 1000 ohm resistors. Or if this resistor takes more of the voltage, leaving three going in this direction. So we're at nine volts now. So voltage across the Zener is three volts. That's a very good sign because our supply is nine, like a nine volt battery. And this guy is getting three. You see, I would expect him to be at six. So we'd have six here and then three here. Let's see what's happening. I mean, this is a good sign too. So we have three volts coming out of the Zener. But again, is this an, is this an accident? I think we should up the voltage again and see if 
this resistor here continues to get his 3 volts, which he should get 3 volts from this source. So let's do it again, much to 12 volts. And let's check what's happening. Zener has staying at 3 volts. Very, very good sign. And this guy is taking on 4.5 volts now. And we have 4.55. Man, so it's not, not really working the way that I was thinking. The Zener itself does seem to drop 3 volts across it. But how do I use the 3 volts? What if I only wanted 3 volts to go through this resistor? And that's the idea. So I'm not so sure. The confusing part for me is, yes, the Zener does drop 3 volts. But how do I actually use this thing? We know that components in parallel, which is in this case, right, they're connected to row 13 right here. So the voltage that comes out of this guy, they're going to have the same voltage always, right? Components in, in parallel always have the same voltage, but the current will vary based on their resistance. So what I'm thinking now is if we connect stuff in, in parallel with the Zener, and we know the Zener is going to stay 3 volts, would that mean that other things that come out of here going to ground would also be 3 volts? Is that how we use the Zener? We sort of use him as our regulator in parallel, not in series. So I think I'm going to test that. And let's plug this in and see what happens. So right now we can see that the capacitor is in parallel, right? Right here. With the power coming in, supply power, and there's a two paths to take. It can, the power can either go through the capacitor to ground or it can go through our Zener. And my idea is that hopefully the Zener kind of limits everybody from going above what he can go above. If he can't reach more than three volts and nobody else should be able to either if we really do share in parallel. So let's see what happens. So he still will maintain to three volts and that should mean that the, the capacitor should be three. The capacitor to seven. Damn, I am not understanding. I'm a bit at a loss here of what to do next. So I think I'm going to look up some schematics and see if that helps. I really hope it's not something silly that I should have thought of or worse, something that I've already done. But I don't think any of what I did was the right way because I, I just could not get three volts coming out of the, uh, the end here. So I'll do that. All right, I am very frustrated because I looked up a schematic and as soon as I saw it, I saw my error. And it's annoying because I should have thought about this. So the idea is actually to put things in parallel with the Zener but properly. I had it in parallel to ground, but you need to keep it within the the Zener itself. And this makes 100% sense to me now. This is absolutely what I was missing. So we're kind of like protected from the, in this case, they have nine volts and this one is a five volt. So we're kind of in a little cocoon, a little Zener cocoon where we are protected from this higher voltage. You shall not pass. Well, you can pass a little bit. Only three volts. In my case, in this case, five volts. So we have a thousand ohm resistor pulling from a 12 volt supply going into our three volt Zener backwards, which is a way that it's used as a voltage regulator. Now I'm going to ground it. I really should have thought about that. Now what we'll do is, uh, we'll just test it real quick before we put on uh, a load. So 3.33, right around the target. That means the rest, 9 volts, should be burned off over here by the resistor. 8.85, close enough. And now what we want to do is use this section as our new load. So in other words, if I put in this resistor here, this uh, 1K resistor, then we should see three volts falling across it. And there's our three volts. So this one should remain at nine. There it is, nine. Our Zener should be three, 3.15. And then 
anything that connects to the positive and negative of the center. This is our new supply. I always thought that this is really just our positive, but really we're using the zener now as sort of our new terminals. This is our positive terminal and this is now our negative terminal for three volts, which is really amazing. Man, frustrating that I didn't think about that. I'm a little <laughs> upset with myself. I can actually just wire this to the other power rail. We'll have basically 12 volts on this side and then three volts on this side. And it's all because of this little zener diode, which is really, really cool. Uh, let's try that. Let's, let's do a little test and uh, and make sure that it works that way so that I know for the future when we need to split voltage, we have a really easy way to do it. Black is negative. And I'll put this here. I know it's a little messy, but it's just a test. And then I'm going to do green as positive. I need to get more wires. When we take voltage from here, we should see that it's three volts. But let us just now use this other power rail. So I'll put in a 1K resistor right here. And then we'll just ground it with this little wire. So let's turn this on and see what happens. So this is showing basically the same as when we have a three volt supply going to a power rail, except in this case, it's actually a 12 volts coming from our power source being regulated by our Zener diode. And then we're pulling that power to this rail so that we can use this as three volts and this side as 12 volts. So really, really cool, really interesting. Thanks again, uh, Dylan Gutierrez, Dillinger Gutierrez for mentioning that and suggesting it. Uh, very useful. Definitely we'll be using that in the future when we start doing more interesting things and we need different voltage levels for different uh, pieces of components. So uh, I guess that's it for now.